Hello everybody! In this video we're going to write the code for a function that we're going to call mult and in these green text uh, lines here, these are called comments, uh, there's a description of what we want this function to do. So first thing to notice before we even read this description, let's notice that mult has two inputs. So we pass it something called m, something called c, and it's going to return w. So what we want mult to do is it's going to return a vector of all non-negative integers, which are multiples of m between 0 and c, including the endpoints. So meaning we want to include 0, and if it can hit c, we want to include that as well. Um, if that doesn't make sense uh, just yet, that's OK. Let's see an example. So for instance, if I do mult of 4, 21, so in this case, think of m equal 4, c equal 21, then we start at 0. We go up by 4, so we get 4. Go up by 4 again, we get 8. Keep going, we hit 20. Notice if we add 4 to 20, we get 24. So that goes past C, which is 21, so we stop. Another example, so let's say we have 7 and 21. So we want to increase by 7. We go 0, 7, 14, 21. And because it's able to hit 21, we include it. So the second example shows that if we're able to write or get to C, then we include it as an endpoint. Otherwise, we stop before we jump over it. So if you think back to the videos where we talked about how to make vectors and any video since then, this actually isn't too bad. And the way we're going to do it is with the colon command. So remember, we said our output is W. We're going to say W. Oops. Let's see. Sorry, my keyboard is in the wrong language. There we go. We're going to say w equals, and so we want to start at 0. Now remember, we have two colons. We want to end at c, and remember, what goes in the middle tells us how much we want to increase each time. So we have w equals 0, go up by end, m, end at c. Now think about why am I getting this yellow highlighted equals sign. It's because MATLAB is telling me I really should put a semicolon after this. Otherwise, it's going to get printed every time I call the function. All right, this looks pretty good. I'm going to uh, save it. So Command S on a Windows keyboard, otherwise Control, or sorry, on a Mac computer, otherwise Control S on a Windows computer. And let's go back to the command window. So here we can see here's our mult function. And remember, we wanted to say, okay, mult of what was it let's say 4 comma 21 this gives us 4 or 0 4 8 12 16 goes up to 20 so that's exactly what we wanted let's try it again with uh, 7 and 21 and here we get 0 7 14 21 all right so it looks like our function is doing what we want I'm going to show you now a few things that if you haven't thought about it before, um, this is just a good example to keep in mind. So for instance, let's say I do something like x is equal to 10 and y is equal to 100. Now if you remember how we defined our mult function, remember we said mult takes a variable m comma c. So what do you think is going to happen if I do mult of x comma y? So notice here it's telling us m comma c, but I'm now telling it x comma y. Do you think this is going to cause an error? Maybe think about it for a second. And it does not. So we know that x is equal to 10, y is equal to 100. So this is the same as calling mult of 10 comma 100. Maybe another example that we could see, let's say m is equal to 4. And let's say C is equal to 21. So remember, M and C, these are what we used uh, as variables when we were defining the function. And now let's try calling mult of X comma Y. And you can see we get exactly what we got before. So remember, X was 10, Y was 100. We go 0, 10, 20, all the way up to 100. So why did I show you this? It's to highlight that we can define m and c in the command window, and that's not going to affect our mults function. So remember, mults was defined using the variables m, comma, c. We can define m and c in the command window, and that's not going to affect our function. 
So maybe one more way that I'm going to highlight this is inside of this function, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type m. And I'm going to put it with no semicolon so that we can see it get printed when we call the function. So I'm going to save it. And again, this is one example where we do have a good reason for not putting the semicolon because I want it to get printed so we can see. So remember, m defined in the workspace is 4. And now let's call molts of x comma y. So we can see within the function, m is equal to 10. But the m here in the workspace stayed equal to 4. So if I press m, I get 4. So just to summarize all of that, all of that was to say that when we define variables inside of the function, we don't have to worry about them affecting the command window. So thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.